Hi guys and welcome. Um, so today we're going to be taking a look at the uh, the RF modules that you can get, the RFIDs. Uh, there's RFID just here and then I've got an uh, Arduino Nano across this side here and obviously then the relay. I was going to put a uh, OLED screen in here as well just to make it look a bit, a bit more proper but I didn't bother. So you have two, two things that you normally get sent with and this one you have to register when you first time run it you have to register this one as the uh, master so when you put that over you see it'll put it in programming mode and that enables you then to put a standard fob across it and obviously read the code and then when you cancel it you see so at the moment this one isn't accepted as you can see so you just run the scan the uh, the master card put that on it it'll flash green to say it's been accepted and installed. It's just that, that's another reason I wanted the OLED as well, so you could see the uh, the information that's actually being done. And as, as you heard, then you can hear the click of the relay. I've uh, changed the settings so it uh, stays on for three seconds, and it just keeps the uh, the relay open for five seconds as well to simulate. So basically, you could just plug anything up to that, like a door lock or anything, anything you wanted. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking about using it on the PC and using it, to, uh, leaving that on a second and then just using this to boot the PC up and uh, bypass the actual button itself. The button inside, I don't know whether you know about the PCs, but the, it's basically two pins inside the uh, on the motherboard that go directly to the button and when you close the button it just shorts them to out, which is exactly what the relay does. So if you was to get some uh, jumpers for the Arduino, the male connectors, no sorry, female connectors put your two female connectors on the original power button switches uh, the power button pins inside the PC and you'd simply connect them to your normally open and your central you've got three, three pins inside so you've got like this one's normally open that one's your common and then this one here is normally closed which means when this is powered down this, these two here will be linked together and obviously you don't want that so you, you put the two normally open and then you common and as soon as this powers up and it engages that will latch over to this side and obviously connect your switch and start your PC up for you um, so we're going to be taking a look inside here just to show you what I've done and how I've done it so this is the inside of the box as you can see and obviously we've got in there an Arduino Nano We've got a single RGB LED, which is uh, the diffused. It's got like a, a diffused cap, so it doesn't uh, doesn't blind you. Uh, we've got the obviously the RFID. Um, to install this, I mean I will show you, but it's quite simple. Just go open up your Arduino IDE, and if you type in RC522, there'll be one thing on your uh, sorry on your library manager so you just type in that on the library manager RC522 there's only one available it'll find it and you can just install it just like that and then literally you just go to obviously your examples and go down and you'll find that you'll see RC522 and uh, just put that put that in and then run uh, I think I'm running door access or access control or something it's called and then obviously we've got the relay here um, the code's already set up for this so that you've got to, uh, I'll try and talk you through it. So we've got, as you can see, that's the connections there. So they sort of look, twist over. So as they're coming off, obviously you've got your first one, which goes to, like I said, goes to 10, it comes around here, bends back, it comes down here to number 10. Uh, the reset on this side here goes around to pin 9 on the air. And then we've got D7, D6, and D5, which are for your RGB. Uh, I believe this is a common common anode, not common cathode. It's the common anode you want, type you want. Reason being, you can put your free pin straight into here, then, and not have to change anything in the code. And then I've used, uh, I think it's a 680 ohms uh, resistor, which is coming from plus 5 volts, and obviously into the common anode. So that's your positive, and then there are your three negative leads there. And that's pretty much it. Um, obviously the relay is sitting on D4. 
So digital pinfall is your output for this. So we've got ground, which is the black. Then we've got the VCC here, which is white, which is also going to 5 volts. And then we've got uh, this pin here, which is one that's going to D4. And that's basically for the uh, for the trigger for this. It's already set up to run pretty much. Yeah, it's just a matter of just wiring these up. Um, obviously then I've printed a project box. I am going to make this available on uh, Thingiverse if you want to download it and I'll leave links in the description. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, one problem you might have is when you've printed this, depending on your printer, you might need to clean this down a little bit just to give it a better, better fit. Just dust the edges so it sits flush. And then it all just pretty much clips together like so. Boot up, you get like a tiny red light, flashes, changes, and obviously it remembers everything because of the EEPROM inside. So it only takes you about a little remember. Um, you can also use the uh, there's there's different programs to do different things, but you can reprogram these and all sorts. So you could change the actual code from this to a different one, one you prefer rather than the standard, and uh, achieve the same thing. Uh, like I said, I've got a two channel relay in there, so I'm only using one channel, which is this first one here. So this one could be used for something else. Um, I don't know, say you want to play a prank on someone and you want to game. So obviously we've got a mode here which is turning this on. But obviously when it's uh, when it comes up and it turns red and fails, you could also have that trigger a second one and have it dump a bucket of water on somebody then. I mean, obviously it's a bit crude, but uh, it's uh, totally up to you. Totally your ideas. Uh, if you've got any uh, questions or anything, please don't be, you don't feel, don't feel like you can't comment or anything just uh, comment i do answer most comments if i get notified um so i'll uh, i'll get back to you um i might add in a little bit as well just after this part uh just showing you how easy it is to set up and uh, it's gonna be a bit more difficult for me because obviously i've already got the program installed so uh, it's just going to show up as installed so i can't show you all of it but it, literally you just it's just clicking buttons it's that's how easy it is to do is go to sketch come down to the uh, include library it's a library manager and once that's opened if you've got obviously stuff installed it's going to install or updates or anything like that at the bottom once that's finished just type uh, rc 522 and there's only one available it's this one here which is the mf rc 522 uh, install that once that's been installed you just come over to your examples, come down to the bottom here, and at the bottom you can see that's where it'll install to. Um, you've got all these different, you can clone keys and all the rest of it, read personal data, write personal data. Um, I'm just using this one at the moment, which is the access control. So we'll get rid of that, and we'll just chuck this one up the top. And if you come on here, it shows you how gives you a rough indication of how it works obviously you need to master to set your other tags and things like that. I'm not sure how many tags it can hold uh, it might tell you on it, it might not uh, so probably a lot, it depends on the data and what data is available and then there's your pin set out so it, everything's on this, it'll tell you what pins need to go to what um, like I say, just be careful on these two because on here it's written like that, but on the board from right to left it's SDA, then it's this one, then it's the Mozza, and then the MISO. So just be careful of that, <clears throat> can catch you out. Um, and then for changing any time, any uh, timers for like how long it's on, I believe it's set for a second on the first. Uh, first run so it'll stay on for a second the LED and the uh, relay will stay active for one second now what you can do is come down to this part here which says access granted and you can change that to three so make it three fires and that's three seconds then but obviously that will enable the LED to stay on for three seconds but it's not going to set the relay for three seconds and reason being is the way it's been written here in the code so what I'll do is is this from here so you want to keep that come to the delay part here you want to delete that you don't need it and then this high part here you want to copy that and then delete it and place it this side so it's below the delay but above this so you'd have to come here obviously drop it down and then put place it there so you'd put the, this part here 
would go here. And then what will happen is then, obviously the relay will stay active until these three seconds are up. The LED will go out, and then obviously it's going to trigger the relay directly afterwards to switch it off. So it'll keep your relay and your LED so they're the same length. Um, the, I'd, I'd have thought somewhere there'd have been a part for that, an int, so you could change the value, but I've not actually found it in the code. Um, I would have thought it had been up here somewhere, but I've not actually seen it, unless I'm uh, blind. But uh, I haven't seen it on here. I mean, you could add it, but I believe it's been set somewhere else. It's probably been set on uh, like a subscript or a filter script or something or other. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope that helps you. And uh, any questions or anything, please comment. Uh, I do read all my comments uh, when I get notified. That is, sometimes I don't get notified. I think it's when people put links and things in, so it goes to a, like a filter page. And I've got to actually go on there and allow the comment before it'll allow me to actually see it. So uh, just be careful of that. Don't like link any any addresses or anything like that because it'll just filter you out as spam. Um, just keep your comments simple and I'll uh, obviously get back to you and help you out any way I can. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a good one.